Hello, today we're going to talk about scaphoelunate ligament. This ligament is a very important component to maintain stability in the carpus, which is the wrist bone, especially between the scaphoid and the lunate. This ligament is found on more to be stronger more on the dorsum. Injuries to this ligament produce significant problems in the wrist. Here we can see the lunate bone which shows that in the volar surface, the scaphoelunate ligament is very membranous and not as strong as the taut ligament that is seen in the dorsum of the lunate. This is the strongest part of the ligament and it can measure to up to 2 mm in thickness. The length can be up to 5 mm between the scaphoid and the lunate. It is a common injury, about 5% of ligament sprains are due to that. The grading of the injury can be just mild to significant where there is a, a, a separation between the scaphoid and the lunate. When the complete rupture or attenuation of the scaphoid ligament occurs, you will notice that the lunate and the scaphoid will have a gap of more than 2 millimeters. With loading of the wrist, this gap may widen and this is called carpal instability. There has been classifications for the severity of the injury to the scaphoelunate ligament. The arthroscopic classification is based on what is seen during the arthroscopy and if it is grade 1 is pure attenuation and if it is less than 2 mm with between the scaphoid and the uh, lunate it is grade 2 and if it's more than 2 millimeters is grade 3 and if the arthroscope can go through the space between the scaphoid and the lunate then it is considered as grade 4. Mark Garcia Elias's classification is based on the type of rupture. If the scaphoelunate ligament ruptures from the scaphoid attachment that is a grade 1 which is the commonest more about one half of them are that if it ruptures from the lunate uh, which is count for another 20%, that is a uh, grade 2. And if it's a mid-substance there, it's a grade 3. And there's attenuation with some uh, intact fibers, it's a grade 4. Both this type 1 and type 2 are amenable for repair by reattaching the ligaments. If these ligaments do not heal or not treated, they result in what is known as carpal instability. What happens here is the scaphoid and the lunate will undergo uh, instability and they start to move apart and increasing the gap between the scaphoid and the lunate. Especially when you clench your fist, there is loading occurs. The capitate would come between the scaphoid and the lunate resulting in this separation. This abnormal dynamics that occurs within the carpus can result in abnormal carpal movement and produces undue strain in the radiocarpal joints. The scaphoid as a result of the instability will become flexed and the lunate will become extended. So the lunate begins to go backwards and the scaphoid begins to uh, flex forwards resulting in an increased scaphoelunate angle. Those patients who have scaphoelunate instability will have a positive Watson's test. Here, when you radial and ulna deviate the wrist with the thumb over the scaphoid tubercle, on radial deviation, when there is maximum pressure over the scaphoid, the scaphoid will flex acutely and produce pressure over your thumb and on x-rays you will notice that there is a gap that can go wider during fist clenching known as a dynamic loading view of the wrist joint. MRIs will show increased sig signal strength in the uh, position of the scaphoelunate and you can classify the nature of the injury with wrist arthroscopy. Generally in the acute phase these can be treated by splinting allowing nature to provide healing 
and later with treatment of strengthening of the muscles around the wrist uh, will increase its functional rehabilitation. However, if there is persistent symptoms of instability and weakness in the wrist with pain, these are the questions that Mark Garcia has put forward in your management strategy. First of all, is the dorsal scaphoid lunate ligament intact? If it is intact, then you need just symptomatic treatment and there is no significant instability. Does the scaphoid lunate ligament contain sufficient material for it to be repaired? This is very unlikely in chronic injuries due to contraction of the tissues that does not allow primary repair. This is only possible in acute cases. Is the scaphoid position normal or has there been significant instability to result in the change in the position of the scaphoid and the lunate? Is there malalignment? This malalignment is reducible or not? If it is reducible, then it is amenable for reconstruction. Are the cartilages in the radiocarpal, that is the cartilage between the scaphoid, lunate and the distal end of the radius, and the mid-carpal joint between the lunate and the capitate normal. This will decide on how you manage these patients. So in managing them, those patients who present with an acute injury within four to six weeks, it is possible if there's sufficient tissue in the back of the uh, wrist, the scapho lunate area, attempt to try to repair them to align the torn fragments together with some sutures, but most important is to stabilize the joint with K wires so that the reduced scaphoid lunate uh, bones are not under tension to compromise the suture. In the subacute phase, that is more than six weeks and under four months, uh, it is going to be difficult to try to repair them by direct means, and one may have to consider some form of osteo. Uh, con chondrofixation with bony suture anchors. When there is dynamic instability due to chronic injury, then the only way to reconstruct this is with the use of uh, uh, reconstruction, which as shown here is using a ligament here. The FCR has been pulled out through a tunnel in the scaphoid, pushed across to the lunate and sutured into the lunate bone here to provide a new scaphoid lunate ligament. And the lunate is then uh, stabilized through a hole in the lunotriquitral uh, 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 ligament to reattach on itself to provide stability. And the reduced fragments are held together by K wire. In chronic cases with osteoarthritis changes in the scaphoid lunate uh, and the red carpus bone, will require some form of fusion. Uh, it's called the radioscaphoid lunate fusion. Or in the case where there is mid-carpal arthritis in the uh, mid-carpus here, then a four-corner fusion would have to be considered. This table summarizes the various management principles for scaphoid lunate ligament injuries and from the various stages and the various types of investigations that can be performed. It basically summarizes the pathophysiology and the evolution of the changes that occurs in the wrist as a result of this injury. The salvage procedure for these injuries are uh, when there is significant uh, radius scaphoid and lunate arthritis in this area is to remove the scaphoid as shown here. It's a proximal low carpectomy and with the removal of the lunate. And once this is removed, this is an excision arthroplasty, the capitate now falls back on the radius and this preserves the movement of the wrist, however, not producing too much of uh, uh, pain. However, the, for this operation to work, you require a clean 
joint between the capitate and the lunate fossa. Here we see a four corner fusion in the mid carpal fusion and the removal of the scaphoid, which, if there have been some arthritic changes for a slack wrist.